to maybe be able to do that. It's nice because when I'm just at home with carers, then I'm just a carer. Full time, 100%, all the time. My ears always with her, whether she needs suction or whether she needs medication, etc. But when you go out, you have a bit of fun as well. So it's a good mix between being a parent, a carer, and being yourself as well. Oh, chatting. Are you saying something too? Hmm? No. <laughs> How much have you learnt to interpret what she's wanting to say? Because we spend so much time with her and it's kind of similar for some of the, the, the carers and the nurses who spend a lot of time with her. You can really interpret what she's trying to communicate. There's definite kind of happy sounds, not so happy sounds when she's really trying to uh, to get your attention and she waves her hands around because she can communicate with her hands but she relies on you to ask the right questions the other day she was sitting in a chair and she was really getting more and more vociferous to us that she wanted our attention and, and we weren't getting to her quickly enough and we found it was because her nappy was getting full and we suddenly realized that you feel so guilty because you didn't get there so quickly but uh, yeah, she really wants to communicate and I speak to her on the phone on my way home from work and you have a chat and when you're talking about stuff that she's enjoying, she's enjoyed in the day, she'll she'll let you know in her voice and stuff that she didn't enjoy, she'll let you know or she'll be uh, be more quiet. We're so, walking now into the West Wickham estate and there's a, a gap, it's one of those narrow gaps in the fence. It's just not quite wide enough for this buggy. Luckily there's also a gate. We've crossed a busy road and now we've been climbing gently upwards towards the mausoleum. I'm struck by how I'm already looking at the walk differently. I'm looking ahead at obstacles, styles, and I'm so relieved we could open that gate. And, and it's quite, you, you know, for you, you have to really have your energy up to do this because there's going to be a lot of unclipping, lifting carries, folding up the chair, lifting it over. There's a lot of effort involved. I used to never think a walk was worth going on unless it was 20 plus miles and or uh, you know a, a good few thousand meters of ascent but everything's relative uh, you know climbing up something like that versus going with the buggy it's the same level of enjoyment and achievement at the end of the day yeah you know what you're doing when you're pushing up a hill with 40 50 kilos worth of, of buggy there <sighs> but it's worth it when you get to the top Now I'm just about 50 metres away from the Dashwood Mausoleum. You can see it really clearly and actually it's not a circle or a square, it's a hexagon. And the outside walls are, are predominantly flint and then it's subdivided by bright white columns and a very decorative bright white architrave as well around the, around the top. It's the largest mausoleum built in modern times. I guess this is Buckinghamshire's Taj Mahal. Good work, Karis. High five. Well done, you. There we go. Good high fiving. Well done, Karis. Yeah. So we've made the climb. What do you think, Karis? What do you make of the mausoleum? Karis, do you like it? No. Karis, <laughs> no, really. do you like it or not like it? You're thinking. You like it. The mausoleum. That's it's quite a impressive. good one. Yeah, good girl. Um, if you want to, mm -hmm. um, to celebrate the fact we managed to get up here with Keris, I've got some slow gin from the slows that were grown last year on the bushes that we walked Lee, past. I like you your thinking. <laughs> oh yeah, you're listening to ramblings and I don't usually drink on the job, but Lee and Julia Clements have insisted that to celebrate the fact that we've climbed all the way up to the Dashwood Mausoleum, at the top of one of the hills and the edge of High Wycombe with Keris, their daughter, that we should have a little toast. What should we toast? Bravery. I think to, to bravery. Yeah. yeah. Keris? Cheers. To you. And to, to you. Cheers, Keris. How do you think the experience with Keris has changed you as parents? Lee, as a dad, are you different to what you thought you might be? Yeah, I think it's changed me, changed me a lot and made me think a lot about what's important and 
patience and you know relationships with Keres, Lewis, Julia and just dealing with grief and sadness and risk and so on because for a while weighing up risk and so on and what happened to Keris was really what you would call the tail risk the the very unlikely but ver very massive risk you know the, the that can happen and, and when that happens to you suddenly you start to uh, you know be aware of the the more extreme things that could happen uh shall i give you a little hand there got a puddle with you um <laughs> It's lucky it's an all-terrain buggy. <laughs> but it also really made me think about what was important and not, not worrying about stuff that's not crucial. Mm. You're so busy all the time, you hardly have time to sleep and you're so tired all the time that unless you really think about what's important and just focus on that, you, you can't keep on going. Mm. And I found it was actually a benefit to the rest of my life and my career as well, because I, I kind of defined myself by my career and what mountains I'd climbed and what marathons I'd run and stuff like that. And suddenly that all went out of the window. And for a while you were a little bit lost because you don't know what comes next, but then you suddenly you realise what's a lot more important. It's quite possibly got me into a happier place than I would have been if Keris was, wasn't disabled, mm. because we have got a very strong bond, Keris and me and Lewis and Julia as well. And, uh, and that's really nice as well. Julia, what about you? I think it has, it has changed me as well a lot. Obviously my outlook has changed completely. I've given up my career in the marketing and advertising world. And I've become a full-time mum and carer. And I think for the, probably for the rest of my life, I'm going to be a mum and a carer. But I think I've become very much a fighter and a voice for Keres. Um, there are so many issues that that just sort of hit you when you have a disabled child. Um, so Keres is fed through a tube straight into her tummy because she can't swallow. Um, and the standard in the NHS is, and uh, worldwide in most civilized countries, is to feed uh, or give people I don't like the word feed actually because you feed an animal you don't feed a person um, that you give them formula milk and I just felt that's not the right thing for Keris I wouldn't want to eat that every day there's nothing wrong with her digestive system she's a growing child she needs good nutrition so I've started giving her normal food blend it puree it down and give it to the tube totally no problem totally easy doing until I met professionals and everyone told me oh you can't do this and gave me all sorts of reasons and this is not allowed so I have fought very hard and like many other families and mums especially around the UK and I'm in touch with them online um, to allow a blended diet this is what it's called it's just normal food but blended and the nice thing is we had success so at the moment I'm allowed to feed my child food in Buckinghamshire um, and but there's, there's a huge movement now um, it has come across from America many years ago and uh, there are loads of hospitals thinking about doing it and allowing it there are lots of doctors actually encouraging parents to do it because they see the children are thriving they're yeah. doing much better they yeah. need less medication they're less ill so that's just one little example where I've become a real fighter and what is the prognosis it's not degenerative. Right. The doctors have stopped giving us prognoses years ago. Mm -hmm. um, when we left the intensive care when she was two months old, we heard through connections the doctors didn't think that she'd last four weeks outside the hospital. And they told us that her head wouldn't grow. She'd have micro, uh, the, the, the microcephaly, the, the, the shrunken head that was all the problem in Brazil back when the Olympics were there. And uh, when we went back for the four-week checkup, her head had grown by two centimetres. So the doctors came back three times to measure it because they thought that they'd they'd made a mistake. Um, and and since then, they they've not given us a prognosis. Originally, when we were coming out of hospital, they didn't think she'd be able to see. She'd never know who we are. She'd never be able to hold herself, hold her head, and so on. And when it's not turned out like that, um, I think they don't want to give people false hope. But I think it's very difficult to say as well because every child is is different. Um, and uh, and it just evolves as it goes on, and you kind of go from 
one challenge to the next. She's having a lot of problems with her kind of chronic tonsillitis at the moment. Um, so you just, you kind of live for the moment and you kind of have plans. You think about schools and all that kind of thing, but you don't think too far ahead. We've made our way back through the woods and we've gone across the busy road again. We're now in the village of Bradnam. Again, really pretty. And there was a very nice pub we could have stopped at, but actually we've just parked ourselves on a bench on the green opposite the Flint Church. Because Ke um, She has a sandwich, sandwich. Um, so basically a slice of bread and some cottage cheese and because it's vegetarian and tomato, red pepper, a bit of spinach. And that's blended together with a bit of almond milk. So in theory, if it so was it on a plate, you would probably eat it yeah, too. Yeah, so it looks like a milkshake. Yeah. And uh, we, we're kind of just drawing this up in a syringe. Mm -hmm. So so she has, you know, all the goodness of the food and we pop it through her feeding tube in her tummy. And she it just goes fast, um, like in a motorway, on a motorway, um, straight into her tummy. Wow. Yeah. Your left leg oh. in, your <laughs> left leg out, in, out, in, out, you shake it all about. You do the hokey cokey and you turn around. That's what it's all about. Yay! For some reason she loves that song. Bye. See you later, guys.